three, two, and one. Welcome to the City Council meeting of February 17, 2022. City Clerk, would you read the preamble, please? This meeting is compliant with the Ralph M. Brown Act as amended by the California Assembly Bill Number 361, effective September 16th, 2021, providing for a public health emergency exception to the standard teleconference rules required by the Brown Act. The purpose of this is to provide a safe environment for the public staff and council members while allowing for public public participation. The public may address the council using exclusively remote public comment options. The council may take action on any item listed in the agenda. Members of the public may view the city council meeting by logging into the Zoom webinar. And the city council meetings can also be viewed live and or on demand via the city's YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Brisbane CA or on Comcast channel 27. Archive videos can be replayed on the city's website, brisbaneca.org forward slash meetings. The city council meeting will be an exclusively virtual meeting. The agenda materials may be viewed online at brisbaneca.org at least 24 hours prior to a special meeting and at least 72 hours prior to a regular meeting. Meeting participants are encouraged to submit public comments in writing in advance of the meeting. Aside from commenting while in the Zoom webinar, the following email and text line will also be monitored during the meeting and public comments received will be noted for the record during oral communications one and two or during an item. Email ipadia at brisbaneca.org, text 628-219-2922, join the Zoom webinar with the webinar ID 991-9362-8666 and the passcode 123456. The call-in number is 1669-900-9128. If you need special assistance to participate in this meeting, please contact me at 415-508-2113. Notification in advance of the meeting will enable the city to make reasonable arrangements to ensure accessibility to this meeting. Thank you. Thank you, City Clerk. Meeting is called to order at 7.39 p.m. Would you join me please with the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Roll call please. Council member Cunningham. Here. Council member Davis. Here. Council member Lentz. Here. Council member O'Connell. Here. And Mayor Mackin. Here. Thank you. We move on to the adoption of the agenda. Could I have a first and second to adopt the agenda as it stands, please? I'll make a motion to adopt the agenda. Second. Roll call, please. Council Member Cunningham? Aye. Council Member Davis? Aye. Council Member Lentz? Aye. Council Member O'Connell? Aye. And Mayor Mackin? Aye. Our first item of business is a proclamation declaring February as Black History Month, and I'll read the pro proclamation. Whereas Black History Month first originated in 1926 as Negro History Week, the initiative of writer and educator, Dr. Carter G. Woodson, who wished to bring recognition to the rich heritage and achievements of African-Americans. Whereas each February commemorates Black History Month, a time to reflect on the numerous con contributions of African-Americans to this nation. Whereas this year's theme, Black Health and Wellness, acknowledges not only the legacy of Black scholars and medical practitioners in Western medicine, but throughout the African diaspora. Whereas Black Health and Wellness acknowledges the self-determination and initiative of Black communities using mutual aid and social support to build hospitals, medical schools, nursing schools, and community clinics. Whereas observing Black History Month, we also note the everyday contributions of African-Americans in business, medicine, science, 
the arts, media, and education. Contributions that are to be honored, celebrated, and studied by our community. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Brisbane City Council takes pleasure in celebrating the accomplishments of African Americans during Black History Month and acknowledges the value African American residents bring to the strength, health, and richness of our city and further encourage greater awareness of the complex history of the United States and the role of Black history therein. As we commit to racial justice and equality in our community, remaining hopeful and confident about the path ahead. We have on hand, let me see, yes, she's here. We have on hand our Brisbane Library Branch Manager, Tamika Price. She will accept the proclamation in honor of Black History Month. And recognizing there are many African Americans working all throughout Brisbane to strengthen our community. Tamika does so personally because she connects all of our residents to the resources and services through the library. Tamika, if you can unmute, I'd like to thank you for being here and accepting this proclamation. Would you like to say a couple words? Yes, I would uh, like to thank you all for acknowledging the work of African-Americans in Brisbane community and especially also the library's work in connecting community members from everywhere um, to the needed resources and services. And so I would just like to remind everyone, we have a couple African-American History Month uh, events coming up. One on uh, February 22nd, which is Kirk Waller. And then we have an author event on March 14th uh, at 6.30. Um, and that also we're, we will be giving out, and sorry, my kids are in the background, um, but <laughs> we will be giving out the uh, author's book, Black Food, um, for that event. And you're able to pick that up at the library uh, a couple of weeks before. Uh, so again, we have an event on February 22nd at 11 a.m. and then one on, 14, on March 14th at 6.30. And again, thank you all uh, for acknowledging the work that the libraries, San Mateo County Libraries and the staff uh, does in the community. Thank you, I appreciate this. Thank you, Tamika, and thank you to your kids for also attending. And thank you for highlighting what's on hand in the library to celebrate Black History Month. We appreciate that. You're welcome. Thank you all. All right. We move on to oral communications number one. Madam Mayor, I apologize, but I forgot to remind you about the closed session report out with um, oh, okay. city attorney. City attorney, closed session report. Yes, Madam Mayor. The council met in closed session to uh, conduct the annual review of the City manager, uh, uh, the review was conducted. The only report out is that um, there is an ad hoc committee formed to follow up on a couple of existing contract uh, provisions. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. So we're back to oral communications number one. City Clerk, do we have any member of the public who wishes to speak? Yes, Madam Mayor, I have a raised hand from Nancy Lexamana. Nancy, go ahead. Good evening, my name is Nancy Loxamana. I'm a Brisbane resident. I live on Humboldt Road. I truly appreciate this opportunity to address the council and the public. I am here representing and voicing support of the Our Neighborhood Voices state petition to qualify for the November ballot. The voter signatures we are gathering are towards the 1 million signatures needed so that voters vote not legislators in Sacramento or developers who think density is the only answer to all the housing woes of the state. This petition's intent is to help reverse SB 9 and 10, which is now in effect as of January 1st. This petition is about land control, not to stop our statewide obliga obligation for housing. This petition, to be clear, is also not about affordable housing, as the current law does not require a minimum percentage in development. Also, the current law, SB 9, has no financial requirement to support police, fire, or town infrastructure. Current law is a build, 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 
and move on to the next project without city control or neighborhood input. These current ordinances will change the look and character of small towns like ours if the developers control the landscape and control without city involvement. As a strong supporter of Brisbane local land control and community involvement, we have the opportunity and responsibility to do our part to get this on the state November ballot. Our deadline is the end of March to have our signatures in. I'm happy to talk to anyone in town about signing and our team will make ourselves available to anyone wishing to sign. Please contact me or sign our petition when you see us. And as a personal note, I want to applaud and thank all the new commission members who are being sworn in tonight. Being involved in our town is so powerful. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. City Clerk, any other members of the public wishing to speak? Yes, we have a raised hand for Michelle Salmon. Michelle, go ahead. Uh, yes, I'd just like to echo what Nancy said. I am also circulating the same petition um, to overturn AB 9 and AB 10. Those uh, two state measures will actually harm housing for our most vulnerable people because it leaves a door open for developers to come in and buy out poor neighborhoods and rebuild. And that will displace many, many people. So please, please contact me, contact Nancy, sign the petition. Let's get it on the ballot. Let's have people, the people of California decide rather than a few well-placed um, politicians in Sacramento. So yes, please call me, stop by the house. I have the petition here for anybody to sign. Thank you so much. Anyone else wishing to speak? We have a raised hand from a Jamie. Uh, okay, Jamie, go ahead. I don't see Jamie muted. No, I'm not hearing. I'm not hearing any audio. Audio from Jamie. Do we have anyone else wishing to speak and we could try coming back to Jamie? I see no other hands and I have received no other correspondences or text messages, Madam Mayor. Okay, so Jamie, we, we have no audio on you. Maybe you could come back under oral communications number two. All right, moving on is the consent calendar. Is there a first and second to approve the consent calendar items? It's items B through G. I'll move. I'll make a I'll second. Roll call, please. Council Member Cunningham. Aye. Council Member Davis. Aye. Council Member Lentz. Aye. Member <clears throat> O'Connell. Aye. And Mayor Mackin. Aye. Tonight we're honored to have all of our newly um, well, soon to be newly appointed commissioners and committee members. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everyone who re-upped by reapplying and all of the new people who've applied. It's always a pleasure to see that kind of interest and we really need that in Brisbane. So looks like first we have the oath of office to planning commission. Um, City Clerk, help me out. How are you dividing this? Madam Mayor, because of uh, this is going to be done virtually, it'll be best if we just do it all at once. Oh, you're going to do them all at once. Okay. All right. So if you could go ahead and read um, uh, the appointees. Okay. And then we could let them into the, the meeting. Okay. So we have first Alex Lau, Planning Commissioner for a term through January 2026. Sandeep Patel, Planning Commission for a term through January 2026. Linda Detmer, Complete Streets for a term through January 2026. Darius Wodziak, Complete Streets, term through January 2026. Aaron Becker, Open Space and Ecology, term through January 2026. Shauna Calms, Open Space and Ecology, term through January 2026. Glenn Fieldman, Open Space and Ecology, term through January 2026. Mary Rogers, 
Open Space and Ecology, term through January 2026. Michelle Salmon, Open Space and Ecology, term through January 2026. Renee Comerford, Parks and Rec Commission, term through January 2026. Trudy Davis, Parks and Rec Commission, term through January 2026. Natalie Ocampo, Parks and Rec, term through January 2026. Tom Sewell, Parks and Rec, term through January 2025. William Locke, the Inclusion, Diversity, Equity, and Accountability Committee, which I will heretofore refer to as the IDEA Committee, uh, term through January 2024. Alexandra Horton, IDEA Committee, term through January 2024. Mangish Kolatakar, I don't know if I said your name, I'm so sorry. Um, term through January 2024. And Diane Oseto, term through January 2024. Do we have everyone here now included in the room? I think we do. Uh, we are missing. Erin Becker, so if she is in the attendee room with the incorrect name, please raise your hand. And Trudy Davis, I have asked to promote you to promote to panelists, but you have not accepted. I uh, will try again. Erin Becker, get... Becker is um, on a flight right now and we'll, I'll be swearing her in separately oh. tomorrow morning. Thank you. Looks like Trudy is trying to come in. If not, I'll allow her to speak. Let's try one more time, please. I believe Trudy had two entry so she's in the meeting oh now. she is now wonderful so hopefully she'll be able to unmute perfect wonderful okay so we have everyone here now city clerk would you please administer the oath of office I will now administer the oath or affirmation of allegiance for public officers and employees please raise your right hand and repeat after me I state your name I'm I'm Michelle Michelle Salmon. Salmon. Alex Lowe do solemnly affirm that I will support and defend. Do solemnly, solemnly affirm, affirm that I will support and defend. defend. Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California. The Constitution, the Constitution of the United, United States, 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 States and the Constitution of the State of California. California. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against, Against all, all enemies, foreign and domestic. domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear, that I will true, bear faith true faith and allegiance. allegiance. The Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California. To the Constitution, Constitution of the United States, States, States and the Constitution, Constitution of the State of, the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. That I take, I take this take obligation, obligation freely, freely without any mental reservation, without, without any, any mental any reservation, reservation or purpose of evasion, or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge, and that I will well and faithfully, and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I'm about to enter. The duties, the duties upon, upon which I am about to enter. enter. Congratulations to all of you. Round of applause. Yay. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you. you. Thank you. Official, fully official. I'd ask each Thank of you. you whether you wanted to say something, but we would be reprimanded for having a meeting past 4 a.m., I'm sure. <laughs> so suffice to say, I hope you are all enthusiastic and we are extremely appreciative of, of your willingness and always all of your ongoing efforts. So thank you again very, very much. And thank you for seeing you at your meetings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Our next item of business is tonight we have a presentation from Developer Universal Paragon Corporation. It's regarding a proposed hotel life science project at Sierra Point. Could we have a staff report, please? Sorry. Um, this item is uh, before you, the, the um, developer um, 
uh, Sierra Point has had a hotel site for some number of years, um, and they are um, going to be making an application for a hotel project along with um, life science. Uh, they have um, been uh, having some meetings with the uh, Sierra Point Ad Hoc Advisory Group, um, and uh, we invited them to come tonight to um, make a presentation to the council. This is really more of a uh, informational um, item um, and a kind of a, an outing that the, this project is going to be proposed and uh, we'll go through the uh, full uh, sequel review process, uh, planning commission, um, city council. Uh, so it's uh, far from, um, you know, it has a very long process to, to, to go through, very thorough process, I should say. Um, but they wanted to come tonight and uh, give you a presentation of what they're looking at doing. And um, with that, um, I think I'll turn it over. Uh, uh, Greg, are you going to lead off for uh, for your team? Uh, I am. Can you hear me? We can. Thank you. Okay, terrific. Thank you. Hi. Um, thank you, uh, Council, for letting us come tonight. We're not here to talk about the balance. Surprise. We're here to talk to one of our other holdings, uh, Sierra Point, and our property that uh, we have there. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to... Um, who is on from uh, Gensler? Who? I'm here, Greg. Okay, great. I'm Sean, the oh, oh, there you go. Here, we can bring okay. up the presentation. Terrific, thank you. So, um, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for having us and allowing us to uh, share a little bit about this project. My name is Sean Galvin. I'm with Gensler, as Greg mentioned. Um, we are the design architect for this project. I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the project to set a bit of context uh, and then describe the approach we've taken to the design. Uh, if we could go to the next slide, please. So as we all know, the Bay Area is really the epicenter for life science and the biotech industries producing more patents than any other area in the United States. Sierra Point, I think you also know, is an important part of the science cluster in the Bay Area. The site that we're discussing today will be one of the last sites to be developed at Sierra Point and will likely be one of the most prominent given its location at the water's edge. It's also you know, really important to keep in mind that Sierra Point is an integral piece of the community, even given its kind of distance. Um, the waterfront, the Bay Trail, the marina, as well as the park that the city is planning are all great community resources. So one of our hopes with this project is to add to this by designing a project that builds on and really amplifies the community elements that exist here. We see this as a, as a destination for the community a point of pride for the city and a place that welcomes visitors across the Bay and really, you know, across the world um, as it plays an active role in developing the next generation of life science innovations. So this view is from the Northeast, um, which shows the project really made up of four elements. The first is the podium or the kind of base of the project that the um, three buildings that you see here sit on. Here we have put the parking uh, below the podium underground, um, which is obviously a costly um, uh, uh, endeavor, especially given the kind of high water table in this area adjacent to the bay. We feel strongly though that, that it's the right thing to do, especially um, as it gives the opportunity to create additional publicly accessible open space that faces onto the bay and connects to the waterfront, which is located on top of this podium. The second element um, is the hotel, and the hotel is really kind of two elements. It's the, it's the tower or the, the building in the foreground and the middle building here um, that again expands the uses of the site beyond the workday around Sierra Point, both for locals as well as people traveling in, hosting restaurants, events, conferences, weddings, etc. Um, a lot of exciting amenities surrounding the hotel. And of course, uh, the lab office building that looks really to redefine the typical lab space, op opening itself up, creating connections to the climate and views um, to the open space below, as well as building on connections to the community by displaying and really kind of celebrating the innovations taking place there. 
We can go to the next slide. This is really the opposite view. It's a view from the Southeast. The life science building is image left here um, and is being designed to fit within uh, an already robust life science cluster at Sierra Point that I mentioned before. It will um, support research and development labs, office space, amenity uses, some of which will be shared with the hotel, creating a real synergy on site um, and movement across the site throughout the day. Next slide. These next couple of slides are axonometric views of the project um, where you can really kind of see diagrammatically what's going on within a simple organization here. There are two things I'd like to point out here. The first is the arrival, arrival to the lab science building, which is image left again here along Sierra Point Parkway, which runs along the southern edge of the site um, and all the way to the bay, culminating in what we have labeled here as the Triangle Park, and really is, is what we assume to be the kind of future public park that the city is, is planning right now. Um, we understand the city's desire to provide retail and active uses along Sierra Point Parkway, um, which we will provide along with a lobby to the Life Science Building uh, that will be highly transparent and connected to the street. You can see that as part of the, the drop-off way there. Um, next slide. So this again is another exonometric view, viewed this time from the Northwest. Um, and there's a few things to highlight here. First is how the three buildings above the podium present a really narrow face toward the bay. This not only helps to scale down the, this edge of the project, but also creates two spaces in between these buildings. The first is a publicly accessible plaza between the Life Science Building, again, image left, um, and the hotel. Um, notice the Life Science Building steps down towards the courtyard, helping to scale the space down and softening the courtyard's perimeter. The courtyard, um, you should note, is only eight feet above grade here and is really intended to create an ease of connection with the future public park um, that's labeled here again, providing a space to gather, enjoy views, sit and relax, share a meal. This is very similar to the raised podium condition um, at Genesis Marina, um, which is also part of Sierra Point and closer to the 101. Um, the second space uh, between the two hotel buildings um, is another courtyard. Um, the hotel is a convention uh, center oriented destination and is being designed to accommodate 3,000 people um, uh, in terms of stays there. The second courtyard um, between the buildings not only contains a port cochere and entry to the hotel, but also it's where the amenities for the hotel are located, especially large scale volumes. And I'll get to those in, in just a minute here. Uh, next slide. So by this point, um, you're familiar with the site arrangement that we're proposing here. East in this image is up. Um, you can see the kind of views towards the bay, the courtyards that I was talking about there um, between each one of the three buildings here in this arrangement. The west is to the bottom um, of the image towards the hills. Notice the east-west orientation of the buildings again, uh, presenting the narrow face to the water as I described while maintaining quite a bit of, bit of distance between the towers from the west. The desire is really to create a porous site in terms of views through and past the buildings while protecting these courtyards from the westerly winds to maintain comfort and usability throughout the year. Um, let me also give you a few statistics on this slide. Between the hotel and life science, or as it's labeled here, biotech projects, there's a total of about 1.3 million square feet being proposed. This represents an FAR of just under five. Um, the height, as you can see labeled here, is just under 181 and a half feet. Um, next slide. Um, so one subject I'd like to cover quickly is that of site coverage. Um, for the life science side of the project, we're proposing a coverage of 45%, which is similar to that of other projects at Sierra Point that have already been approved. Again, the example that I would point to is Genesis Marina that I spoke about earlier in terms of its raised podium. Uh, next slide. Um, for the hotel side of the project, we're asking for a coverage of 58% in order to create the type of destination experience and the right amenities that are needed, grand lobbies, ballrooms, conference rooms, and other supporting amenities like fitness centers, restaurants. 
Um, these types of uses do not fit under slender tower footprints uh, due to their large volumes and long span structures. Um, so we have moved them into the courtyard, essentially displacing what could have been surface parking here, which again, we've chosen to sublimate and push below grade in order to provide the best experience possible. Next slide. So without the podium, um, you can see that we would be within a reasonable site coverage if we just counted the, the two buildings that flank the courtyard. Again, we feel that asking for increased site coverage adds to the viability of the hotel uh, by placing uh, the amenity between the buildings, lifting the outdoor open space, and placing all the parking underground. It really can enhances um, the experience and creates the best experience possible. Then next slide. So this is an aerial image um, of really all of Sierra Point is captured here in this image, showing the project within the present day context. I'll point out again, we've referenced this a couple of times, the Genesis Marina project at the top of the page, which is under construction now. Uh, next slide. And another aerial view from the, the other side, uh, this from the Northeast. And again, I think it, it shows the, the connection of the, the low podium Again, parking below grade, the ease of connection out towards the bay from the east, and the real kind of modulation of the buildings, again, trying to narrow them as much as possible. Sean, Sean can I add one thing here? Yeah. Is that you'll notice the difference in our site is that all the other sites, while they have a lower uh, coverage ratio, there's no green, it's surface parking. And so what we've done is push the parking below the grade so the green comes right out and it is the plaza. And so while it is have a high, well, especially the hotel has a higher coverage, it actually is when you look at the site from an aerial perspective, it's all parking lot. It's not green for the other, the other sites in that Sierra point. I think that point is really important to um, emphasize, especially I think in light of the proposed park that's going to happen between the marina and this project. You know, what we're really trying to do is, is extend that open space um, and really complement it in some way. So next slide. And we'll get into some views. This is a view um, of the hotel entry along Marina Boulevard. Um, you're looking northeast in this view. And it shows the simple and elegant approach um, we're exploring with regards to materiality and articulation of the buildings. The facades will have depth, allowing for a change of light and shadow throughout the day, um, as well as really helping to heighten the environmental performance due to a certain amount of self-shading um, that we'll get through a, a slightly deeper facade. Next slide. And a view corridor here. This, this image is a view corridor along Sierra Point Parkway, looking east towards the bay. The arrival to the Life Science Building is to the left of the image here, as you can see, where again, we are designing for active spaces, including retail, um, and the lobby for the building, which will be, again, highly transparent and visually connected to the street, as you can see represented here. Next slide. And finally, a view corridor um, at Marina Boulevard looking north uh, towards the bay with a hotel on the right side of the image. And we're here again, we're exploring um, ideas of the use of form, materials to soften uh, the building and integrate it into the landscape as it reaches the ground and the lower levels. And with that, um, I'd like to thank you for your patience um, and welcome any questions that you might have. Okay, council, any questions? Madison? Terry? I don't have any questions at this time, but thank you for your presentation. Okay. Council Member Cunningham? I also don't have any questions at this time, just looking forward to some more information that we can dive into. Okay. Council Member Lentz. Um, thank you, uh, Mayor. Um, so I, I'm curious um, you know, what your plans are for uh, on-site energy generation. Um, it's a good question. 
I don't know that. Uh, I think we will have solar on the roofs, but I don't know if we've thought anything beyond that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So can I ask the, the council a question? Is one of the things that we're trying to do is get a feel for whether the size is appropriate in the council's mind, if there are any major concerns that you have so that uh, we could address those in design and um, hopefully expedite the process um, by soliciting comments early. Councilmember Cunningham. Could you explain to me, Greg, or um, whoever has this answer, when you're talking about subterranean parking, which I certainly like the idea of, but given the instability of the land, I lived through Loma Prieta living in the marina in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that kind of makes me start to jitter a little bit. Obviously, um, mm -hmm. architecture and, and those kind of things are different than they than what was built in the marina. But sure. can you just talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so I'm gonna let Sean take that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you're right, the codes, There's there's been a lot learned since Loma Prieta and the codes have been a significantly upgraded sense. Uh, typically on a site like this, we'll do two things. We'll um, drive piles uh, to bedrock. So it would be you know, similar to building a building within the city, uh, not just on the Bay Edge. The bigger concern here is usually groundwater um, and water infiltration. So typically what, what has to happen is you build a bathtub uh, in a sense, and that's, that's waterproof. And essentially the garage sits in that tub, which is then supported by the piles. So there's quite, it's quite a bit different from, I would say, something that's away from groundwater. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is, as I pointed out before, a lot of added expense in that. Um, I think seismic uh, activity is less of a concern, although it's always a concern, um, than the waterproofing in a condition like this. Well, given sea level rise and the, the numbers that are being presented to us mm -hmm. um, in general, it, it's like, Okay, how, how are you looking at, at that particular issue in that particular space? Yeah, typically, I don't know if you wanna talk about this, Greg, but we're using 100 year projections. Um, there are models um, that reach out 100 years in terms of sea level rise that are typically pretty conservative that we're designing to. Our um, design standard is the 100 year flood 100 years from now. Yeah. So yeah. we use the BCDC supplied standards that are consistent throughout the Bay Area, same ones we're using at the Baylands, uh, and it's the 100 year flood 100 years hence. Thank you. Um, can, I, can I offer one other thing, which is uh, Council Member O'Connell, one of the questions you asked us before is that how far set back are we from the water's edge? And I wanted to tell you that we focused on that and the building is 350 feet uh, set back from the start of the marina. Thank you for that information. Um, and I, I just wanted to check with staff while this is just the preliminary um, showing of this um, project to the public and to the rest of the council, um, I would imagine that our comments should be formulated and brought through staff, not given directly at this time to the project developer. Is that correct? The purpose of tonight's presentation was informational. So, you know, it is kind of the applicant providing the information to the council. Yeah, there'll be a formal review process, formal environmental uh, process. And, you know, again, your role in, that evaluation is later in that process. So yeah, it really should be, it's information on the part of the developer. Great, thank you very much. I just don't wanna be adding too many comments at this point. So thank okay. you. Okay. It looks like we have one member of the public would like to speak, Michelle. Um, yes, 
I'm not hesitant about giving my comments on this, Greg. I think this is way over development for this area. Delve digging into the landfill to do underground parking is going to be a nightmare. And um, it looks like it encroaches on city owned property. Where's all the it parking does. for the marina? It and, doesn't. So, okay. Michelle, let me just That's answer good. a couple of questions. Everything on the project is within the four corners of our site. We don't go into the, the waste level. Uh, we go down 22 feet, which is a top of the, on top of the clay cap. Mm -hmm. We've already done the research on where the, where the trash level is. So thank you for bringing those questions up. Um, and so I just wanted to be able to address those as we go through. Okay, and I'm also sh um, probably sure that you're aware of how far down it is to hit bedrock, probably at yes. close to 180 feet. Um, yes. sort of the height of it, which is, I think it's just a massive development for right there. I really do. Um, I okay. would really like to see it scaled back and be more amenable to the marina. I, it looks a little overdone to me. Um, and I, I have to admit, I'm a little bit tired of too much biotech, but that's okay. my opinion. So I'm giving it to you now in it. early Thank days. You very much. And thank yeah. you for all your work, Craig. I do appreciate yeah. that as well. No, so um, one of the, a few of the things that we've looked at is that um, the 181 feet is the size of the Hitachi building. Um, so we are, we are making sure that we are not exceeding the existing quantum height that's already out there. Um, we're also, uh, with the exception of the hotel, making sure that we're not exceeding the coverage ratios of other things that have been approved out there. So what I would say absolutely is uh, the hotel um, is uh, much denser than um, what has ever been approved before. And we're at 58% versus the 45%, which is what's been approved. So I agree with those statements that, uh, but there's no way for us to do uh, the ballroom, which is uh, the generator for the hotel, uh, which is just, you know, as we've all been in them, they're great big squares or rectangles, and there's no way to hide it. It just is what it is. So um, that's something that we wanted to be very forthright about and talk to the city about and just say, you know, uh, that's, that's what we have put forward is one of the benefits, as we've always talked about, is the TOT that is generated from a hotel of that size that is a long-term benefit to the city and economically is, is um, quite extensive. So I, I understand that. And one of my yep. other great concerns is egress and ingress uh, to Sierra Point Marina, which already is a huge concern um, because there's only one way in and one way out. We and agree. this, with, uh, you know, developing a facility with over 3000 people, um, plus, you know, I just am very concerned about that and I'm very concerned about water issues. So I see a, a lot of problems for you to overcome yeah. to, um, develop this, but Michelle, you know, I, I, love, I love you. You have all the questions and it's good. <laughs> so, so two things that we're, we're addressing that one is, as you know, we are acquiring water just like we are acquiring for Balin's specifically for our site at Sierra Point. We're not counting on the city providing any water. We're providing, we have made arrangements to acquire that water. And the second thing is on the roadway, we think it needs to be changed. Um, one of the things that we will be talking about when we go through the process is having a shuttle service that is a dedicated rubber tire shuttle on its own uh, non-flow traffic lane to feed Sierra Point. And we have already started discussions with uh, phase three and with Health Peak uh, because what we're concerned about is whether we go or not, with all of the life science, when it's open there, you're gonna have the same problem that Oyster Point has now, which is there's no way to get to and from it without trying to drive your cars back and forth. And, um, and there's only, that road is not sufficient. So one of the things that we're looking at is how do we improve the road and do it in such a way that we're discouraging individual cars, which is why we're parking at a lower parking standard 
and we think that that is necessary. And we're going to run a shuttle from our train stop to the project. And where is the train stop? At Baylands. That's yeah, okay. That's a ways away. All right. Well, good luck with this. Thank you very much. <laughs> And I may need to be unmuted. Sorry, Alex Blau, you have a question? Alex? Yes, hi, yes. Oops, am I unmuted now? Yes, go ahead. Okay. You are. Hi, thank you. Um, I just had a couple of questions. Um, how many floors of parking or how many uh, spots was were in the plans? <clears throat> uh, 1,200 cars of parking and it is a valet and mechanical parking system. Oh, there's quite a bit. So how is that one lane road? Like, like you had just, it was just discussed about the ingress egress, you know, with the single lane mm -hmm. road going in there, that's gonna, that's gonna be an issue. <clears throat> that needs to be addressed to 1200 spots. You know, even we believe with that's, the, that's an issue. And uh, we also know that you have another project going through the process that has 3000 parking spaces. Um, being proposed. And so it's just, we think that that is the wrong way to go is more parking. We're trying to go less parking and all the way across, including, you know, you guys know what we're doing at the Valence of just trying to eliminate single car access up and back and up and back and try and create other ways for people to get to and from work. Um, well, so, you know, there's a number of hotels already present in the area. So you've projected that there's going to be a demand, you know, for 3,000 rooms. No, no, there's not 3,000 rooms. Oh, that, oh, was, okay. there, that was 3,000 people attending a wedding okay. event, okay, okay, or a ballroom. No, the, the number of rooms is going to be, depending on the size of the rooms, between 600 and 700 rooms in two different hotels. So, and um, um, for the parking, once again, for the parking, where's, is there gonna be any, you know, for the parks there? Will there be, you know, how will this affect the parking for people, you know, staying at the marina as well as people that want to utilize? It won't impact it at all park. because mm -hmm. our parking is under our site, uh, doesn't touch any of the city property. Okay, and, Oh, the last question I have is um, within the space that uh, Paragon has there, is there any plans or any remaining space available um, that might be associated for this for the development of any residential housing? No, it's it, it, you can't build residential housing on top of the active landfill. Only commercial? Just commercial. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for your questions. Okay, I see no other questions from the public. Any other council questions? I have just one quick one, Greg. Yes, um, Colleen. You're showing a lot of those green areas. Are you putting in any kind of water repurposing in order Absolutely. to that Absolutely. landscaping? Yeah, we will not, in anything that we build, we don't use potable water for non-potable uses. And if you are considering solar, are you considering battery storage there as well? Uh, not like we're doing at the Baylands where we uh, have massive battery storage. Um, here, we, yes, we will have battery storage, but it will, it, it will be at the incidental use of the buildings. And we're gonna try and do battery backup rather than uh, generator backup. Okay, thank you. Any mm -hmm. last call on questions? I don't see any. Okay. Thank you very much for the presentation tonight. Thank you very much, Council. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Good night. All right. We move on to staff reports, the city manager's report on upcoming activities. Clay. Thanks. So for, um, this week, um, people have been uh, seeing and I think noting uh, the mural at the Midtown Market is being restored. Uh, stabilization work started last week 
and continues through the end of the month of February. Uh, the original muralist, Mona Karen, will be returning to uh, restore the mural, which I think was originally done um, about 20 years ago. Um, the second item is uh, dealing with um, our um, land or sorting of our organic waste. Um, uh, organic waste uh, is um, something that um, we are trying to um, comply with state, new state laws and regulations. Um, methane in greenhouse gases are 85 times more potent than carbon dioxide and landfills are the third largest producers of methane in the state. Um, the scavengers company has uh, um, named uh, their carts uh, Aussie, the organics, um, and are encouraging people to put uh, their organics in the, uh, the uh, green waste cart. Um, if you have not yet uh, gotten a cart, uh, you can call the scavengers at uh, 650-589-4020. Um, residents of multifamily residential complexes should encourage their property owner or manager to make contact. Um, and both businesses were sent notices in early February, letting them know that the city will begin assessing citations to non-compliant businesses as of January 1st, 2023. Um, San Bruno Mountain, uh, going hiking. Um, just to note that dogs are permitted on leash in the San Brown, Bruno Mountain Ecological Reserve Area. Um, which is basically the, uh, the county park area or the uh, state park area, uh, but not in the county park lands. Boundaries is about halfway up the mountain where you can be sighted by a county park uh, ranger if you have your dog. The uh, county, San Mateo County is doing a county in immigrant uh, survey. Um, you can complete the immigrant survey and tell uh, the county about challenges and barriers you may be facing. Um, you can get that at uh, tinyurl.com slash SMCO survey. Um, the Lions Club is doing their annual um, uh, crustacean um, uh, event um, and dinner dance party. Um, that will be um, on February uh, February 26th, um, and uh, you can go online to sign up for that. The uh, this will be a virtual event. Um, you can order by the 21st and drive through pickup on the 26th between two and four at the Mission Blue parking lot. Uh, the dance party is a virtual e event taking place on Zoom, and you can see their website to uh, on how to join for that. And then you can learn more about housing policy in Brisbane at the Housing Element Workshop on Thursday, February 24th at 7.30 p.m. on Zoom and Channel 27. Hear more about the city's selection of sites to zone for future housing in order to meet the state-mandated regional housing needs allocation. And then finally, uh, just to uh, thank everyone for their cooperation. Um, we know that the state has lifted um, its um, ban on indoor masking. However, uh, here at City Hall and City Facilities, we are uh, continuing to request uh, that face coverings um, be um, applied um, when uh, coming in and visiting in City Hall. Um, City Hall is open uh, for public walk-in uh, twice a week, Monday and Thursdays from 9 a.m. to 1. We will be increasing that on March 1st to 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. on those two days. Um, a list of services that can be uh, conducted remotely is available at brisbaneca.org slash online services. Um, and also we uh, look uh, forward to being able to increase the number of days that we're open as we move towards uh, the summer. Um, and we will keep uh, the public notified of that as, uh, as that rolls out. And that's it tonight for uh, City Manager's Report. Thank you, Clay. Move on to the countywide assignments and subcommittee reports. Who would like to start? I'll go first. Madison, please. So I had in Lunafest ad hoc subcommittee, we decided to schedule Lunafest for July 11th. Um, so more information to come as we get closer. And, June 11th. I mean, sorry, June 11th. And um, we are 
planning for an in-person indoor event. Um, so we'll see if that ends up happening. Um, but so far that's the plan. And then Karen and I had a public art advisory committee meeting and we talked about master planning and, you know, the initial thought was to come up with a master plan for, for the Baylands, but we realized that really we need to have a foundation for the city as a whole. And we talked about pivoting to looking at having a master plan for the city first and foremost, and then creating master plans for large areas um, after that. So, you know, Crocker Park Trail may have its own master plan for art. The Baylands may have its own master plan for art, Sierra Point, et cetera. But to create master plans for those areas, there needs to be something it's pulling from. And that's really what is the what is the direction and the vision for art in Brisbane as a whole for the foundation. And then you dive into site-specific master plans from there. So we're going through about seven to eight different master plans from uh, all over the country and looking at how other cities have done it um, and determining you know, what sorts of things that other cities have in their master plans that speak to us. Um, from there, kind of identifying if there have been certain firms or consultants that have created those master plans for those cities and inviting them to apply when we put out an RFP and we'll have a better understanding of the scope of work of what we're expecting for our master plan to look like so that we can you know, hire the correct firm to create that for us. Um, so it's a lot of material. We're basically taking two master plans per meeting and looking at them in detail, talking um, about comparing and contrasting them and then looking at what we like and what we don't like until we've moved through all of the plans. And then we would be able to start talking about hiring somebody to help us with that process. So that is what I have. Okay, thank you. I don't know, Karen, did you have anything to add? Just, just, just wanted to add one thing. So <clears throat> when we're looking at these master plans from all of these different cities, we're looking at large cities and small cities and doing that compare and contrast, as Madison said, to see, you know, not every small city is going to have, you know, the same kind of people living in it who have certain wants and needs like we have in Brisbane, which is very specific. I mean, we, we are very different regarding, you know, what small cities look like around the country. And so we're not going to rule out the big city plans because there might be some really great things that are in that too. So when we're doing this compare and contrast and these things are huge and there's a lot of information, we're going to choose a small one and a large one to study at the same time and just see what comes out in the wash. It was a really, really great, robust conversation and I, I thought the Public Arts Subcommittee did a great job. So we also are agendizing for our next meeting choosing a chair and vice chair because our committee does not have that. And I think directionally it's been challenging um, because there's really no figurehead that's controlling, you know, helping to control the meeting and the conversation that's really been staff. So just like any other commission or committee, the public art committee will have a chair and a vice chair. Likely we have to discuss it at the next meeting, but correct seem to be interest in that when it was brought up at our most recent meeting. Yeah, I thought it went really well and has progressed and come a long way. And hopefully we can let Stuart off the hook for being the facilitator. Show you'd like that, Stuart. Thank you. Terry, do you have anything to report? Well, I attended the LunaFest meeting and Madison covered that very well. Uh, we had a Baylands subcommittee meeting with Karen, I had, and we reviewed possible grants that may be available um, for the city to apply for in regards to hazardous material cleanup in the city. And so we're looking for more information on those possibilities. And then I also had an airport roundtable meeting 
special meeting and they did um, approve to move forward with um, a night hush requirement for the airlines to fly up the bay mm -hmm. and out the Golden Gate Bridge and then go to a waypoint where then they go to their final destination. Um, it should, once implemented, and the FAA believes that it will be implemented in the next 90 days, um, should bring some relief to our community between one and I want to say 4 a.m. So it, we're also looking at extending those hours as the feasibility of it. And these are for flights that are coming from SFO and from Oakland. So we got a little cooperation between uh, the flight, the FAA, the airports, and from the regional air control. So that's a big win and we hope that it's a big win for our community as well. Uh, Terry, if I may just say that's really good news and I was curious, um, has anyone brought up those fighter jets taking off from Moffitt? Uh, it has not come up in our meetings, but I don't think anything that is military we can even discuss because they get to do their own thing. Yeah. But okay. I have not heard of it. Okay, because apparently they're getting some pushback from residents about that noise. And I, I just wondered if, if anyone had brought it up. I haven't heard it yet. Okay, thank you. Cliff, you and I had a meeting. You want to report out on that? Um, well, you can do it, Matt, uh, Madam Mayor, if you want. Okay. We had an infrastructure subcommittee meeting. Um, we talked about the financing for Bank of America, examine potential of uh, securing a bond on it. And um, I think we have some more research to do on that. You want to add to that? I think you wrapped it all up in a nice bow. That, that's about all that's reportable that's right now. Was. Pretty brief, yes. Did you have any other subcommittees, Cliff? Well, you know, um, I had a committee.org meeting this morning, and I wanted to thank uh, our own Randy Bro for uh, accepting a role on the supervisory committee at committee.org. And I think um, that's going to be a really great fit for us. And of course, you know, for the organization too, because Randy, you know, really knows his stuff. But, you know, as we deal with uh, traffic demand issues, um, having uh, Randy, you know, be a part of uh, a committee with community.org, I think uh, could be a real benefit for our city. So thank you, Randy, for doing that. And um, that's it. Okay. All right. We move on to the city council meeting schedule that was in everyone's agenda packet. Assume everyone's had a chance to look at it. Is there anyone that would need to make a comment or would like to make a suggestion? I have a comment. Yes, please. I know we, we talked about it, but um, the July 14th meeting, which I will not be able to attend, that's a special meeting. I've, I've totally forgotten what that was about. That, that, so we, what we're working with is the July 4th holiday. So that's why we canceled the, uh, are proposing to cancel the July 7th meeting um, that, you know, because of packets going out and time to read them and all that. So we usually have one meeting in July. So we were proposing to cancel the two, what would be the two regular meetings and then have a meeting on July 14th. So it'll be a regular business meeting. Okay. So just so you all know, I will not be able to attend that meeting. Okay. Anyone else? Any comments or suggestions? Hearing none, is there a first and second to approve the city council schedule? So moved. Second? I'll second. Roll call, please. Council Member Cunningham? Aye. Council Member Davis? Councilmember Lentz? Aye. Councilmember O'Connell? 
Aye. And Mayor Mackin. Aye. Thank you. City Clerk, do we have any correspondence for the record, please? There were no written communications written to council, Madam Mayor. Okay. We go back to oral communications. This is number two. And we had someone named Jamie wanted to comment. I don't see Jamie still here. Just have a raised hand from Michelle Salmon. Okay, Michelle, go ahead. I have three things. Uh, two of them are from the um, from Clay's uh, report. One is please remember, do not put any pet waste in your green waste bin. That's a big, big no-no for South San Francisco scavengers. So please be conscious of what you're putting in your green waste bin. There's a lot of stuff that could go in there, but kitty litter, dog waste bags, they do not belong in there at all. They should go in the garbage. And two, in terms of dogs on the mountain, um, please look at the state and county park map. Go to, you know, it, it's, it's online and pay attention to where dogs are not allowed. And in the other areas, please keep your dog leashed and please, please pick up your dog waste. It is not like coyote scat or any other animal waste. Dog waste does not belong on the mountain at all. Please, we've worked so hard to try to protect our habitat. Um, and also think about having shoes that you only wear on the mountain and not everywhere else so that we don't spread a lot of invasives. And then the third thing is just came up in the, the schedule of meetings. And there are a lot of council meetings that are uh, count, canceled. Basically, December, most of July, and all of August. Um, because December, there's only one meeting, and that's the special meeting after an election. Um, and it seems like we have a lot of work to do. So uh, I kind of hate canceling all those meetings. Uh so far in advance when we don't know what we're going to be facing at that time. Um, and that's about it. Thank you so much. And thank you for all that you do. Thank you, Michelle. We're at the hour at 8.43 PM. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thank you. All right. Good nice night. work, Mayor.